to honor your word this morning. So, Father, we pray that your word this morning and even your prophetic word will be released. This is a prophetic season. Your prophetic word will be released from this altar. We lay down everything before your feet this morning, spirit, soul, and body. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you alone will come and speak through us in the mighty name of the name above every name, Jesus Christ, Hashem Adonai, our Lord and Messiah. And we can come and say Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to allow the Holy Spirit to come, just come and lead us this morning what He wants to do and to minister unto us. Sometimes I'm standing here and I'm not sure even, I'm even scared to, to speak because I know I don't want to speak out of the flesh. I only want to speak if the Holy Spirit allow me to speak when He speaks through me. So, Let's start off this morning. I want to share something um, about the body of Christ, not only in the city or in this nation, but in the West and especially in the world that is unskillful. So in Hebrews 5.13, we can see that even Paul was addressed this issue 2,000 years ago. If, Paul, if we can believe that Paul is the, the writer and the author of the book of Hebrews, that most of the scholars believe he is. So, Hebrews 5.13 is speaking about, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is still a babe. So when, as we look at 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 3, we can see the Lord is speaking about milk and He's speaking about strong meat. So now the same words are repeated here again in the book of Hebrews. And why I'm speaking about this last week, um, the Holy Spirit started to speak through us about the resurrection and the resurrection order. And then one afterwards, one of the brothers came to me and he said to me, it's good to speak about it, but it makes no change in his life. I said, it makes no change in my life. No change. Because I know I, I will go to heaven, what will happen there? Doesn't matter. What all gebeur maak jy vir my saak nie? Hoe kom het ek nou na dit kyk? Why do I have to look now into what's happening in heaven? And I have to answer him. And the only way that you can answer somebody is not out of an opinion, but out of the word of God. Now, so let us see what the word of God is speaking when is a person, when does the word speak, when is a person unskillful, when he is still on milk, when he is on, on meat, how can we discern? Wanneer kan ons sien, is iemand op melk? Wanneer is makkelijk om te sê, die ene is op melk en die ene is op vaste kos. How do we know when somebody is on milk or someone is already on strong meat? So let's continue, maybe to, let's continue to Hebrews 5.14. Everyone, let's go back to 5.13 and just let us just read. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. So when you are using milk, you are unskillful in the word of righteousness. And the word of gerechtigheid. For he is still a babe. Because babies are drinking milk and then 14... But strong meat belong to them that are sure and full of age. We know we, you cannot give meat to a baby that is newborn or five, six months. You cannot give meat to them. They still have to drink milk. 
So we can see what is happening and taking place in the natural is also addressed in the spiritual. So but strong meat belong to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised, and listen to this, to discern both good and evil. So the problem is now, we are entering into an age that no one of us can afford to be a babe. The body of Christ cannot afford to be a babe. Then you will lose out. And this is the problem in the body of Christ. And this week, we have sat around the table with about in the morning, 10 or 20 disciples, and in the evening, the same. And they will return next week. And I ask them one question. Go and ask people around you, two or three people around you, what is and where is the kingdom of God? Only one question. Where is the kingdom of God? And I want them to come and return to see for themselves the people around them how skillful are they in the word of God? So now when we can see, you cannot discern between good and evil when you are on milk. You cannot discern. And in the last days, discernment will be tested. When you go and read and study the book of Matthew 24, and speaking about the last days and the end times, Matthew 24, Jesus Christ himself is speaking about discernment four times. The most of any other chapter in the Bible, in the word of God. Don't be, deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Four times about be, be, being deceived. And you, uh, you can only be deceived. If you don't have the truth and the knowledge of good and evil inside of you. So when you are still a baby, you cannot discern between good and evil. So let's go now. This is the last verse of Hebrews 5. So from Hebrews 5, it's going into Hebrews 6. So let's continue to Hebrews 6, uh, Chris. So Hebrews 6 is addressing this whole issue when you are unskillful and what is the basic principles of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So this, this chapter in Hebrews 6 is so important. In the past, many scholars and people started to train disciple groups and they start also with Hebrews 6 because it's important. And sometimes when, when, when I... Um, Gerrit, Gerrit Nell do a study and um, a weekend seminar about Hebrews 6 that was in 2000 in 2007 I first came aware of this so no, no nowhere in time before in church somebody speak to me about this so maybe th this morning you can sit here and the first time you came and realized there is something in Hebrews 6 <coughs> that is very important to understand when you start with discipleship. And the Lord is speaking. He said, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection and not laying again the foundation the first word and that, that first part in the other um, translations that you will get this. Leaving the elementary principles of the doctrine. They call it the basic principles. The elementary principles. Met ander woorde, as jy op universiteit kom, you will get economics 101. Economie 101 of what the fuck. Ek het Hy goed achtergekom, alles wat jy begin, begin altyd by 101. <laughs> Basic principles, dan het jy hierdie vak 101, dan weet jy, alright, jy begin nou met hom. 
So now the, the, the author of Hebrews is telling us the basic principles of the doctrine of Christ. He said, leaving it behind, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. <coughs> and I also will show you this morning, there's a difference between the doctrine of Christ, the doctrina, the leerstellings, that word doctrine means leerstellings in Afrikaans, dit wat jy moet leer, the doctrine of Christ and the apostolic doctrine. And this is the elementary things. So when a church knew about the basic doctrines, especially the apostolic doctrine, they, and you follow that, you cannot miss the mark. Because this is what the apostles taught. This is what they have taught in, in the time of Jesus Christ. And they have been taught by Christ himself. So Christus het hulle opgeleid wat om vir die, vir die nazies en vir die, vir, die, vir die jode en vir die Grieke en die Romeine allemaal te gaan leer. <coughs> Paulus, Paul was even caught up into the third heaven and he was taught by Jesus Christ himself in the spirit. So and then he's speaking about let us go on to perfection. And then he's speaking about six things and we can put it in pairs of two 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 and two uh, three times two is six so not laying again the foundation of repentance and i don't want to get into this but i will just give you the six basic principles again one is the foundation of repentance of dead works so there's a teaching and there's a place to teach somebody what what does it mean when you are repenting and the, the repentance, uh, the outcome of the repentance is not fruitful, but it's dead works. And of faith toward God. This is one. Alright, the next one. 6 verse 2. On, uh, of the doctrine of the baptisms. You see, there are elementary things about the baptisms. So this is plural. You can see it's not singular. Um, baptisms, and let me just define it for you. The baptisms is the baptism of water, Holy Spirit, and fire. So Hebrews are teaching us and learning us. <laughs> this is the elementary things. Baptisms. So you cannot teach a baby when he's three months old about baptisms. So this is about the baptisms of the water, the spirit and fire. And not laying on of the and and of the laying on hands. That is the, the, the second period, doctrine of baptism and of laying on hands. So there's a teaching also about impartation. When you impart in somebody and laying your hands on someone, who can you trust to lay hands on you? Can everyone pray for you and lay hands on you? So there's a teaching about that and to, to know how to, to understand. Do you feel comfortable for every, anyone just to lay hands on you? No. To know about laying on hands. This is important. And then... The last pair is, and of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. So just go back for me to verse 6, verse 1. You see, the Lord is telling us, you cannot go into maturity. You cannot discern. If you are still do not understand the basic principles. And part of the basic principles, 6 verse 2, is part of the basic principles. And we stand guilty before the Lord. So we suppose already a long time ago to teach and learn the people about Hebrews 6. And especially also about the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. 
So how can you get in a car and drive with somebody to a place, but you, you are not sure what's taking place and what's happening there? So exactly what that brother was telling me last week, I don't care about what's going to take place in heaven. I will get with you in your car. Even if you are driving somewhere, I will not even ask you, where are you going? What are we going to do there? And what time are we going to spend there? Denk jylle iemand sal so simpel wees om in een kar te klim en saam met jou te rui vir twee weke en hy het los sy werk achter en sy vrou en kinders en weet nie wat jy daar gaan doen nie. Niemand sal so onkindig wees om het te doen nie. But we are heading, we are heading to a place that is called eternal judgment and we don't even know what's going to take or what's going to happen in that place. And the resurrection of the dead, how the dead will be raised. And then with which body are they going to raise? So this is important questions to ask. So let's go to Acts 2.42. I want to show you the difference between the doctrine of Christ and the doctrine of the apostles. Mane, hierdie is net om vir julle te toets en vir julle te sê, luister, we have to get on the same page. We have to get on the same page. There's not much time left. We have to get people, we have to get the brothers ready to disciple their family, their homes, their children, and also to evangelize the street and the city of Bloemfontein. If 12 disciples could have been could, could have, if one person, Jesus Christ, discipled 12, and that 12 discipled the old world until today, how cannot the, the couple of us here started to, to minister and disciple uh, the city of Bloemfontein? So nothing is impossible. And in and, and, uh, Acts 2.42, uh, and they continued steadfastly to 38. Let me read the whole verse in context so that you can see where we are coming for, uh, from. So, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit took place. The apostles have been ordained. And there's something about the name or the title or the office of the apostolic. And there's a reason why Jesus prayed throughout the night and the next morning he ordained them in the office of the, uh, of the apostolic. They have been disciples, then they become apostles. But that is, a, that is a teaching for another day. So the outpouring of the Holy Spirit take place. Then Peter said to them, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is another teaching on this uh, he loves to do that and to teach about to be, to, be, to be baptized in one name, the name of Jesus Christ, because you want to be clothed in Christ. Son is not the name, but Jesus Christ is a name. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we are in warfare. And our, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So if you are in warfare, you will need spiritual weapons and gifts. Then Peter said to them, Repent, be baptized in the name and remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Next one. Thank you, Chris. For the promise is unto you and your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord shall call. Next. 40. And with many words that he testify and exhort saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation, 41. And then they gladly received, you see there's a place 
that you have gladly have to receive the word. And then they were baptized, and in that same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 42. And they continued, after they have been baptized, they don't just send them back, they started to disciple them. What have they been what did they learn? And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. You see, one day I've stumbled across this word, the apostles' doctrine. <laughs> and the Heilige Geest let me not stop. Niemand had it learned. Nie. Nee, doom nie, nie, pastoor. Niemand had my learned. Nie. And I just asked the question, so what is the difference now between the apostolic doctrine and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And I get all the information. It's about 100 pages with all the scriptures. And I started to study it. So sometimes in the discipleship, we will go through it. But just to explain to you, the apostolic doctrine, the apostolic leerstellings, is what the apostles Die, 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 die kerk en die stede geleer het. The church of Ephesus, the church of Smyrna, elke een van hulle, dis wat hulle geleer het. So if you are in a church, if you belong to a church, or doesn't, I, I, I don't care in which church you do belong, as long as they are following the apostolic doctrine. And here's the test, I'll give you an example. There's about six divisions in the apostolic doctrine that you can get in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, and it's scriptural. And I'll give you, not one, and two, let me give you the basics of that. The basics is repentance, baptism, Baptism in the Holy Spirit, unity with God, and the holiness of God. This is what they taught. This is the doctrine and the apostolic doctrine. And I will give you, for every one of them, I will give you even scriptures in the Word to prove it. So, this is more or less the same than Hebrews 6. To get and leave the elementary things behind. So, as daar a gemeente is, and hulle glo nie in die doping van die Heilige Geest nie, they, then they don't follow the doctrine uh, of the apostles. Ek sê dit nie. <laughs> I'm don't, uh, you, you know, I don't tell you about this. It's the Holy Spirit. And that's the word of God. So as you did not follow me, if you don't follow baptism, if you don't follow uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, baptism in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and fire, and then also oneness of God, the unite of God, um, holiness of God, and then also in this, what they've taught the apostles is signs, miracles, and wonders. You see, this is what the, all they call it, this is what the pop or the fans learn. Because many times, many communities don't believe in wonders. And we can now see in the newspaper, even when Israel was in Klokulan, how he was persecuted. Persecuted. So, I have to speak to you and because normally I, I listen with a good ear when people especially when they want to start or speak about spiritual relationship, their relationship and what they are doing then my spiritual ears are open to receive so last weekend I was with uh, Henny Smith, we are now on the and there was a, a brewer that I had seen it, and I was with him in, in the 90s. 
when I was just born again in a church in Bloemfontein, and was gesel as ek sê, maar ek onthou jou van die jare af, so en so, and then he asked him, okay, so where, where are you now, um, fellowship on a Sunday, where do you belong? And I said, he plaques a norm. And in that, he's telling, uh, 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 and he, I say, we're ons genied het so baie. Now my question is, if you sometimes, if you enjoy what's taking place here, I had a surprise for you this morning. You are at the wrong place. You have to be confronted. You have to be confronted. Your soul has to be confronted in this place. You have to be challenged in this house. If your soul is not challenged, you are at the wrong place. And miskien klink het vir verkeerd, maar listen to me. There's a scripture, I think it's in James 1, where Paul is speaking about, he said, count it all joy. <laughs> Ken jylle, het jylle al die geskrif gelees, count it all joy, when there's a lot of temptations, and you, when you started to be persecuted. Count it all joy. So as jy lekker kry in a kerk, how can you count it all joy? It's only your carnal part that will receive it, your flesh, and this black or black. I was there for a long time in my life. Then I started to realize there's a difference between to know exactly that the Holy Spirit is from the outward to the inward, that is religion, godsdienst. Wanneer jij van buiten naar binnen iets voel en goed voel, of moet jij van binnen naar buiten goed voel? Lay down your life. Count it all joy. Go through temptations and trials. Because you will not receive a reward wanneer het goed voel nie. You only will receive a rewa- uh, your reward when you go through trials and tribulations. So maak jylle gereed, wil jy a reward hee, of wil jy goed voel en sonder a reward voor en te beweeg. So it's very interesting, last night at some time, I just opened the Holy Spirit. Remember last week I said to you, there's 70 years from that place to this place, 70 or 80 years. And you have to come to a place and see, where am I in this race? Waar is ek op hierdie race? Waar is ek? And ek het al baie keer oopgemaak en in die verlede, en gisteravond toe ek kyk, that was 7 days ago. And gisteravond toe sien ek, Perry Stone het 5 daad terug, a teaching release, wat hy vir die gemeente vraag, waar is jylle in hierdie reis? So I believe it's not coincidence that I've asked this question, so that the Spirit in, the Holy Spirit in the world, the Holy Spirit on the earth, is prompting the body of Christ now with the same question, and the same questions. Where are we in this race? Where can you see yourself in a year's time? And if the Lord is calling you up, if you know, if my uncle had, if my uncle knew, he had only 14 days left, 14 days, van het hy siek geraak het, so hy, is there any regrets, so hy terug wou draai en sê, nee, ek sou meer tyd wou spandeer, ek sou graag hierdie, wat sal jy anders wil doen? as die vraag nou vir jou gevraag word. My uncle stood before a question, and he was not even sure, 14 days left. 14 days left. As hy, as hy, ek dink, ek dink daar is een ding wat op, in hom opgekom het van dankbaarheid. There is one thing that came upon him, when he became sick, 
And after 14 days, the Lord took him. That the, that the Lord's timing and the grace and the mercy on his life was so huge and so great. He can only praise Jesus Christ for that. Because if that happened in 2005, he have, he have, he have lost his whole reward. Because he became born again in 2005 and the Lord gave him 19 years to work out his salvation with fear and trembling. Verstaan jylle, daar is a plek wat ons net voorbij gered moet wees. You have to work out your salvation, you have to work out your reward every day. Because heaven is much more than I just want to get there. I just want to arrive. So I have to lay down a foundation for you to understand there's much more in, he in heaven. So, ons is bezig in die discipleskap, Revelation 2.26. I want to show you something. And we laughed about it on, we laughed about it on, um, on Wednesday. As om net vir julle idee te gee. In the millennium, there is a, Jesus Christ is coming back for a thousand years. Physical years. And now the question is, kom hy terug vir a duisend jaar? Fysische jare? Yes. Because we are living in a physical world right now for 6,000 years. And he have created in six days, and in the seventh day, the Lord blessed the seventh day, and he rested after the seventh day. So the time span for this dispensation is not six days, it's seven days. It's six plus one. Six plus rest. Six plus Jesus Christ, thousand years. There will be babies born, and even the, the scripture speaking about when a baby, when a person is 100, is very young. They will even return to 4, 5, 6, 700 years. Wie van jylle het gebeet? Jy gaan weer, daar is mense wat gaan 6, 7, 8, 900 jaar oud word. Weer, terug. In the time, time of uh, Methuselah. Time of Noah, 650. Time of Adam, 930 years. So mense gaan weer oud word in die tyd. Fysies leef. Jesus Christus gaan met his glorified body, he will come and sit on the throne of David. And there will be cities, little dorpies, South Africa will be here, nations will be here. And then somebody have to teach the nations, because jy kan nie meer tot fysies tot bekering kom, maar jy gaan moet in righteousness leef, om in die koninkryk van die hemel in te gaan. Because when you study Matthew 5, die bergprede kasi, you can go and read, blessed are they, blessed are they, blessed are they, jylle weet, there's, there's nine blessed, blessed is the poor in spirit, they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, blessed are they that, that mourn, so dit is jou hartsgesintheid, wat jou in die koninkryk van die hemel gaan inbring. want Jesus Christus het teruggekom. Dit is hoe jylle daar gaan inkom. And in dit, there will be people, nations have to be governed, word, is daar burgemeester en die premier oor die, oor die stad en oor Bloemfontein? Ja. Is daar president oor kings? Ja. So God is, Jesus Christ is coming back to establish his kingdom of heaven. It's a physical kingdom and the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. We addressed it on Wednesday. It's a spiritual kingdom. The kingdom of God is now supposed to be in, in you when you became born again. So in this physical kingdom, you have to rule. There's, there are people that's going to rule over cities. So iemand van, van ons, as jy getrouw is, gaan a dorp kry. As jy baie getrouw is, gaan jy stad kry. As jy baie, baie getrouw is, gaan jy een nasie kry, soos een president. 
There will be positions, but not corrupt like today in, in our government. And in this dorpie and dorpe and stede, allemaal gaan het die krij nie, because there are millions of people in paradise, but only a few can rule and reign over cities, because there is only so much cities and, uh, and, 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 and in the world or in the earth, at, even at that time. There will be much more people there, then there will be people that can put in, 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 in responsible positions. So my vraag is, if you have not walked out your salvation and your reward, can you come to this place? And he that overcome and keep my works unto them, to him I will give power over the nations. The, the, the word is also speaking about cities. And I have to tell you this. There's even cities. And I will show you, maybe next week, I will get the scriptures of cities. And daar gaan stede wees. So the, the word of God is leading us and showing us how can we earn. Because in John 3.3 3, it's speaking about you will see the kingdom. Then you will enter it and then you will inherit it. And do you know in the wilderness, when they came out of Egypt, there was no cities. There was no territory in the wilderness. They were in the wilderness. So this is your first stop after you left Egypt. Mark it for your sin. This is your first place where you can stop. Maar jy moet eers dier die water gaan, soos Mooses met die Israelite dier die water gegaan het. Dan, toe hulle dier is in die see maak toe, toe kom hulle achter. Ons kan nie terug gaan nie. <laughs> We, you cannot go back. Jy is dier die water. So the moment when you enter into the water of baptism, when you get out of the water, you are in the kingdom of light. You cannot go back into the kingdom of darkness, Jy het besluit, jy wil in licht wees. En dan, ek het vir hulle gesê, what happened in the kingdom of light, in the wilderness, what happened there? And I tell them on Wednesday, alle hel breek om jou los. All hell breaks loose around you. And many people will tell you, no, you will be blessed, the Lord will do this, and the Lord will be good to you. You are in the wilderness. Dis hoekom? Dis die waarheid wat ons verkondig. We cannot, we cannot tell you a half, we cannot give you a half gospel. This is the truth. You are in the wilderness. But in the wilderness, there is a cloud in the day, and there is a fire column in the night. That's the Holy Spirit that will lead you. When the cloud is, when the cloud stops, you have to wait. When the cloud moves, you have to move. This is how the world, and that took 40 years for them in the wilderness. But you don't have to spend 40 years. And when you go into, this is enter, this is see the kingdom, enter the kingdom, but now you want to inherit. Then you have to go over another crossing. That is called the Jordan. You have to cross the Jordan. And you know when they crossed the Jordan, there was an ark of the covenant even on their shoulders. You have to carry the Holy Spirit. And then you can go into the promised land. And into the promised land, the Levites inherit cities. Not land. They could not inherit land. The priests could inherit cities. I hope this makes sense to you. This is why everyone will not get the same. But we, will, we, we, can, come, we can come to that same place. So it is impossible to teach everything on a Friday morning. Therefore, there is the discipleship on, and it's never too late. The discipleship works like that. It's not a program, it's a way of life. It's life changing. And it gaan nie oor, dit gaan net oor die heilige geest, because he is the teacher. So as een van julle voel, julle wil net iets sê, 
wat al reeds begin het. It's not a program that you have to start here, yeah, now you are behind with some classes. No, you can, you can pop in any time. Enige tyd kan jy inkom, and it's just ongoing. And even the people that are now in discipleship, they will come at a time and then they will start to disciple smaller groups. Maybe on other days, but about the same teaching. This is the only way you can start to learn, when you also disciple. But it doesn't, there's no sense in it. There's no sense in it. To disciple, to hear the word, and not to live the word. Because, James is speaking about hearers and doers. And I think it may all be a bit of 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 a of a bit 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 of and there's only one way you can live it out. You can ask Andre. I can, I can see the change in his life. And I don't want to say there was no change. I saw him the first time when he came in here. He was humble. But I could see in a very short time how the Holy Spirit, without discipleship, but only by drinking, drinking the living water every day, spent time in the Word, spent time with God, his life started to just, Hy het net so voor en toe begin gaan. What the Holy Spirit. Time that is spent with, with, with Edward. Time that is spent in the Word. Time that is spent with music. I can see there's an acceleration. This is the Word I'm, that I'm seeking for. So you, you are not behind. Don't look at me and say, Ja, yeah, but you had so veel jaar. You know the Lord set me apart for seven years behind a short line a mix, mixing desk. Ek was, ek wou nie eers voor mense praat nie. And it's not about me. It's not about Bloemfontein. But there's a calling on this city. <laughs> you know there are 12 gates in the world. 12 gates around Jerusalem. Damascus, uh, Ein Kerem. You can look at the different gates. And you can divide the dates, uh, the gates and South Africa is in a Bethlehem gate. So when we called this place House of Bread, we were not aware Bethlehem and House of Bread is the same place. Bethlehem, the House of Bread. And so then we discover we are in the judicial capital, so we are sitting in a gate. We are sitting in a gate. So Bloemfontein is a gate. And even if you are not at a place and said, but Lord, what about, just start with one place. Come in on a Friday morning, invite people, because when you are sitting here, you can be a witness. Jy kan a getuie wees, and that's already a place where you have want to be. As to be a witness, what is taking place, because all the words and all the prayers over this nation, will go up into a heavenly bowl and you have witnessed what has taken place here and you can be part of it. So the day when the Lord called you up, you can, you, you can at least start to testify and say, Lord, I was a witness in the house of bread. I was a witness of what your prayers are doing and changing this nation. Do you believe we can pray the ANC out of office? I believe it with my whole heart. If our Archbishop of the Anglican Church, Desmond Tutu, can make a statement in the 80s to the National Party and he said to them, we will pray you out of office and we will pray you out of apartheid, out of this nation. If that could happen, the same can happen again. And that is what I for, for PW Bota said. Desmond Tutu. He said, You can do what you will, we will pray you out of office. Ons moet so bold raak, dat ek moet vir 
Cyril Ramaphosa in sy gezicht kan sê, enjoy your time, we will pray you out of office. Because the Lord gave him, and I know about Romans 13, there's a time when we have to honor kings and princes and everyone, but there was a time when Daniel was called into a palace, and he honored Nebuchadnezzar, but his, but his son Belshazzar, Belshazzar, called him in because even his mother called Daniel in and said to him, there is a handwriting on the wall. And Daniel was in his 80s. Spent almost 70 years in Babylon. Came there when he was 17 years plus 70. He was 87, almost 87 years old. It was the end of the dispensation. And we are standing in a gate with the Issachar tribe that know the time and the seasons and we are as Zebulon in this hour and the Lord show us this is the time and the season and the writing is at the wall the writing is at the wall we have to believe it so father we want to praise your name this morning we want to praise your name let us just stand worship there's 15 minutes left. And let in this time, let us just start to pray. Andre will start to worship. There's time for worship. And let us allow the Holy Spirit. My brother, if you had a word or anything, you can bring it to the altar. If the Holy Spirit flow and just prompt in your heart, just come and release a word. I just know there's a word from you. And even from Libya in your time when you're walking with Christ Messiah, this is now the hour. When you are there, if you, don't, if you cannot speak in, in tongues, it's good. If you cannot speak, if you cannot, cannot, cannot speak in the Spirit, it's good. If you can pray in the Spirit, then you started to pray in the Spirit because then you can, the people around you, impart in the people around you let the let the word start to flow let us press in let us give him praise and honor father we praise your name for this morning lord i know sometimes the word is hard but we have one or two choices we can run from you or we can run towards you and I have decided many years ago, even if it's hard, I'm going to run to the threshing floor. I'm going to throw myself at the threshing floor. I'm not going to run away. And if any word here, the word must be tested. The word must be tested. Even the word this morning must be tested. So we bring it into remembrance. Everything, refine the word that has been released this week morning Lord if it's not from me if there's anything carnal in this word remove it Lord remove it but if it's spirit let it go up into your heavenly sanctuary let it go up before your throne as a sweet smelling aroma even the praises of him right now when we started to pray in the spirit allow the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, make, make, us, make us uncomfortable. Press in, press in, press in. We praise your mighty name. Robo Sibariboto. Father, thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the fathers and the priests in the house this morning. Father, we praise your name. We pray now your anointing over every priest, every brother, over his family, over their wives, over their children, over their children's children. Father, I pray now over the men. I pray now over their finances. I pray now over their finances. Father, you are the one. This is not about prosperity, but this is the appointed time that you'll put them in the gate. We are standing in the gate and we are trusting in your word right now over our children, over our families. 
the Lord God the Father is fond of families his heart is on the families father we pray your word your goodness your mercy open up open up opportunities there are opportunities there are opportunities you can open up the doors resienda ribotsoto resienda thank you father jobs jobs father i know i pray now even over my brother strauss to take the right opportunity that he will go and he will hear from the lord father i pray over her right now for the right job and the right opportunity the right door the right opening if there is any addiction addiction problem in your life father we pray we stand against that spirit of addiction we lay it down at your feet this morning let the holy spirit come and flow through us this morning we give you praise we stand in here as a testimony for jesus christ is lord we stand in on this altar to proclaim your name and we say thank you jesus christ lord the writing is on the wall the writing is on the wall the petition is in the council of heaven this is your time this is the time and the hour for south africa this is the hour for this nation that jesus christ will come to the front thank you lord 40 years after athlone that the fire of the lord start again in the cape 50,000 60,000 souls the last week evangelists are sent out thank you father for richie thank you lord for wilbur thank you lord for they that you sent them out to potchefstroom next week thank you lord thank you father we praise your name we started an account 12 baskets a non-profit organization where people can sow into you can only receive a harvest reap you can only reap a harvest when you sow into a harvest so 12 baskets last night we asked the the men to come and sow and brothers came and they sow 5000 into that harvest and father we thank you for the prophetic amount i want to bless them for the 5000 that they have sown because out of the 5000 that you have fed 12 baskets have been picked up we give you praise and honor this morning ri khoto robo shienda ri bata praise to your mighty name Praise to your mighty name praise to your mighty name praise to your name praise to your name ribosieta tata risieto rubusienda yes it is sure so there's a glory there's a, a move there's a move this morning if you have to leave early you can leave if you want to sow you sow Father we pray for that Melchizedek blessing but there's a there's an anointing in this place and we don't want to leave before the Lord is finished if you have to leave you can leave but we don't want to leave before the time we want to wait on the Lord we want to wait on the Lord if you need prayer you can come to the altar resibo robotsorobo sibara if you trust the Lord for prayer you can come to the altar if you want to lay down just at the altar you can just come and lay down at the altar this is the house of the lord father i bless everyone every brother every family everyone in the house this morning come and fill us come and fill us with your love and your mercy to sibo rubo torubo sienda Yes, Yenda Ribotso Ruboshienda. Praise to your mighty name. Praise to your mighty name. Praise to your mighty name. We bless you, brother from Libya. The Lord bless you in Africa. The Lord bless bless you in the in the Bethlehem gate. The Lord bless you in the Bethlehem gate. The Lord bless you in the Bethlehem gate. The Lord called you be in the Bethlehem gate. Ribosibenda Ribo The Lord bless you in the Bethlehem gate. This is the time and the hour the Lord called you. 
to make to make weak hands strong to make weak hands strong to come and take up lift up the hands to make weak hands strong in the city of Bloemfontein to come and help and press in to come and help and push in we praise your mighty name 